So this is what I have so far. I have a disconnect, which that one came from Menards, same as Home Depot, Lowe's, whatever. Um, about $18, something like that. Um, this panel, I think I said before, was a dumpster dive. And so I've just started to put things in the panel here. I'll open it up. And I've got my VFD mounted here. Okay, when you buy the VFD, you should go and look uh, through. This is on Automation Direct, okay? So I'll go look through what they recommend for accessories. Uh, you know, like I've got the DIN rail here, which I actually bought from Zorro. But then you need the, um, the adapter, okay? You got the DIN rail adapter for this guy that goes on the back. You screw that on the back so it'll pop onto the DIN rail. Um, this terminal here was another dumpster dive. And this was also the recommended fuse kit, which you get the fuse kit and a couple fuses from Automation Direct. So that's kind of nice. They had, had those things um, listed there for you. So then what I've got so far is my... Um, my single phase power, my 220 single phase is going to come in here, go up to here, and then follow down and around. You can see the yellow and the red wires following down to these first two leads on the top here, which are L1 and L2. And I've got a ground here. Um, and then we'll start hooking up the three phase motor from down here. All right, so that's kind of a nutshell what I've got going on in this panel. Well, yeah, other than I mounted a fan up in here, okay? So I don't know if that's super easy to see. Let me bring a light down here. All right, so I got a fan in the top. The airflow for this thing, if you look in the manual, flows from flows upward, okay? All right, that flows upward. So this fan, which I got it set right, is uh, gonna be sucking air up and I just popped an extra couple little holes down in here which I already had a bunch of holes in here but popped an extra couple holes in there so we can get some airflow through here all right continuing on so now I have this cord wired in here that goes over to the mill just don't have the mill and wired on yet um, so we got uh, T1, T2, T3 coming out of here in uh, yellow, red, and black. And if I'm not using the right colors, it's just because that's the wires I have. So what I found is that these connectors up in here are really short and wimpy and a pain in the neck uh, to work with. Those little connectors right there. Um, I should have had some little spades or something to go up in there, but anyway, I had hard wire. Anything too thick won't go in there. <clears throat> anyway, I came around here, and I'm using this guy here again just because if I ever change anything, I don't want to mess with these too much. Um, connecting back into here and then going off to the mill, and I got all my grounds off here. Again, for the umpteenth time, I am not an electrician. I'm just doing this. Okay. Um, then I've got my wire coming in here from my disconnect, my ground, and my other two wires for the, the 230 whatever, okay? Coming in there, made me a little conduit there from my disconnect, had them coming off here. Uh, and then I made a cord here, like so. Okay, so here now I have repaired, I don't mean fixed, I mean paired them up differently, um, these leads coming out of the motor, okay? So if it was set up for high voltage, you're going to have 6 and 9, uh, 5 and 8, 4 and 7 paired up, and then 1, 2, and 3 are going to be uh, connected to your, to your line voltage, okay? But I'm running low volts because this is just a shop here with 220, um, 230 volts, whatever. So I got to get rid of 6, 5, and 4 and just pigtail them off, okay? Cover them up. And then I'm pairing 
three and nine, eight and two, and seven and one, according to what it has on the front. So this is just a picture of the nameplate. Okay. And then I'm going to hook these three here to my uh, output from the VFD. All right, so I'm going to wrap this up here, I think, because I just went ahead and kept on wiring until I got it finished and running, and it is in workable condition, not in the final condition, but definitely workable. And what I'm going to add from now on is just going to be kind of niceties and accessories. So where we finished off with was the motor uh, pigtailing the right um, ends together. I don't know if that's even the right terminology, but that's my terminology anyway. Okay, and you saw I had those three ends. I hooked the three ends to uh, the cord coming out from the, the VFD. So you had your three, the three wires hooked um, to the three wires from the VFD, and it doesn't really matter uh, which way you hook them up other than forward and reverse. So that makes it kind of easy. I ended up having to switch two of the wires, which I did, I did over here, okay? You can see I had red and yellow switched around. I just switched two of these around right here um, because my direction was wrong and there was no way of me really knowing what direction was what. Okay, so what I ended up doing is I put this in a little box here. My connectors there covered them up, put them in a little box, which is really cheesy, but that's what you get at Menards. <clears throat> so um, then the next thing I did was I wired up my controller out here. So the nice thing, like we said about this um, GS2 from Automation Direct, is you can separate the controller. You get the cord with it. Okay, the cord follows along. Get a long enough cord and I put that in a box um, actually just got a box with a plug cover on it and and made it that way you know I got to drill with two holes in here to fasten this on I got it plugged in and let's uh, let's fire it up here so as soon as you do that you'll hear this power up and of course my fan comes on with that and when you first turn it on, what's going to pop up is Hertz, okay? Right now sitting at zero because the machine isn't running. And you can toggle through a bunch of displays which are shown in the manual like Hertz, uh, motor RPM, um, amps, whatever, okay? And I, I'm not going to talk about what all those are because they have a really good manual, okay? That's, I like the manual. Um, it shows here what each one of these things are. So what you got to do to start with is, and it's really simple, the manual is, is really simple the way it shows you out. You hit your program key and you basically just start walking down through each one of these things. Your nameplate voltage, uh, your motor nameplate amp, your base motor frequency, which in my case is 60 hertz, your motor base RPM, and your motor maximum RPM. So you just walk down through those, those parameters, all right? And then there's these parameters that you can set like how you want it to stop. If you want it to stop by ramping to a stop, it can actually stop faster, especially if you have that uh, uh, braking resistor in there, um, your acceleration time, your decel time, your volts per hertz setting, depending on what kind of uh, torque requirements and so on you have. So that's actually really easy. You just hit the program button and then you can toggle through the different ones. So say if you want to, on the first one, um, P001, which I don't remember what it was, three and a half, okay, amps. That was the amp setting, okay? Um, and it'll be different for every different machine, I'm sure. Hit display to get back out of it. So that's pretty much 
Yeah, I mean, it's really not complicated at all. The manual is, is like I say, it's extremely helpful, and it's got wiring diagram or whatever in there um, to help you out. So it's, it's surprisingly simple, actually. So let's just uh, fire it up and see what happens here. So I'm going to turn it down kind of slow and hit run. And I've already messed with some of these settings here. So that's 24.7 hertz. So, you know, the speed of this just is going to depend on what belt I have it on and whatever, right? You're not going to have a lot of torque here, okay? So you're probably going to want to run close to normal 60 hertz most of the time. The other thing you got to watch out is since this is not not a uh, VFD rated motor, they say from what I'm reading is to keep it above 60% of RPM. So that would be what, 36 hertz, right? So there's, there's roughly 36 hertz. And in my case, I can hit the display again, and it'll tell me it's like 1,038 RPM roughly, okay? So you can toggle back through all this. Okay, get up to H again. And I oversped mine right now by 2X, so I can go up to almost, almost 120 hertz. Okay. I think how it arrives at this number here is just by the maximum RPM that you put in as well. So that, that's how it arrived at that number was by the maximum RPM versus the standard RPM. Hit display, it'll give me my RPM right there. 33.99, well, I put in 3,400. So, I mean, that's pretty close. What's interesting about this is if I want to reverse directions for some reason, I can't imagine that you'd be going this fast and need to reverse directions, but anyway, this is the way it is. Uh, hit forward reverse right there, just hit that button while it's running, and it'll boom, ramp down, go to zero, and then go the opposite direction. And the RPM show the same, it doesn't put a minus on here, but it's the opposite direction other than you can see reverse right there in the little green. All right. So, change the speed back down to normal and hit stop. So you could certainly make this a lot more complicated than what I've put together here. I mean, there's things for kind of, you know, smoothing out the, the uh, signal or the voltage, etc. Going to your motor, um, EMI filter. I, there's a host of different things that could be added in here, uh, you know, for e-stops, etc. Well, this is just a home shop, so it isn't like I'm worried about other people in here. So that's why I'm doing it as kind of dirt simple as possible. Um, you know, you might do something different. Anyway, um, what I am going to add eventually here, uh, when I kind of get time to do it, I've got a toggle switch here that could be used for a run forward, stop, and then a reverse position. And I've got a couple switches like this that are just push button switches that I'll put in for um, uh, jog forward and jog reverse. This little readout here, which I got to figure out a little bit more, but I think I can put that on for um, reading out, say like amperage or, or RPMs or percent motor load or whatever, and plug that into here. Um, adding those kinds of things is actually pretty easy. You just have all these connectors down here and you can connect those in. Oh yeah, the other one I'm gonna put in is a speed pot, all right? And the only thing I'm thinking here is that this little panel here, I don't want my grubby fingers on it all the time when I'm milling, and so having something a little bit more industrial than this would be great. This is really um, not any more industrial than a kid's toy when it comes right down to it. Uh, it's very, very lightly... Uh, made um you know don't throw a hammer at it or anything because it, it is very lightly made 
Um, anyhow, uh, that's about it in a nutshell. I guess overall what I have to say is that this was a lot simpler and in a way lower cost than I would have thought. Um, the VFD was about $250 and that was for a two horsepower model. Since this is a one horsepower uh, mill, I think I really could have got by with a smaller one, but I always like to overdo things. Um, and really the important thing that you got to look for is not so much the horsepower, but your full load amp rating when you're rating them. Um, I think that's what you really should be looking for. And there'll probably be, you know, people, few people comment on what the correct thing to do, and hopefully they're right. Anywho, that's about it. I am anxious to get milling, and so I'm going to cut this video off for now and say thanks for watching. Come back again.